Después de la lluvia, by Catanu Muebla. Scene once, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Mila's home, daytime. Mila and her parents are huddled around a couch covered in dirty pillows and torn up blankets where Rafael is sleeping. He appears sickly and cannot move without dissolving into a coughing fit. <coughs> Mama <coughs> leans over Rafael as he begins to cough, pulling him up in a seated position in an attempt to comfort him and help him stop coughing. Papa frowns and takes Rafael's hand, kisses it, and stands. I'm going to run down to La Famacia and try to see if they have any medicine. My arm is still acting funny from when I fell anyway, so it'll be good to have it. I, I thought it closed because of the hurricane. <coughs> I have some friends who said it's opened again. Okay, go and be quick about it. And if you can buy una botella de agua as well, or some form of liquid to soothe Rafael's throat. I'll try. Mommy, my head hurts. I know, me. Mommy, why can't we just move to a shelter or something? It would be healthier. Mia, you already know why. This place is our home. We can't just leave it behind. We don't have a roof, Mommy. You can barely find enough food to feed yourself, let alone us. How can you be so calm in times like these? What are you talking about? How can you be okay with how we've been treated so far? With the way we've been neglected? Instead of the roof tarp we asked for for months ago, we have got mold and bacteria. Instead of the freedom to move and seek refuge in the United States, we're stuck here, in this tiny hovel that's one wrong push away from collapsing. Mila, don't say such things. Our home is fine. We just, we're just missing a small part, that's all. It's nothing your papi can't fix once he gets the supplies. That's not true and you know it. Our house gets worse by the day. We know that Puppy isn't ever going to find the tools he needs to fix our Mia, home. Mia, please, just stop. Why, Mommy? We've been waiting for this tarp for who knows how long. Every day it rains is another day we are exposed to the elements and to the germs and mold that will grow because of the water. We have to do something before we get sick and die. Especially Raphael, who, if you haven't noticed, is now sick because of it. Mila, mi amor, I know <coughs> full well the kind of situation we're in. And your whining about it isn't going to make anything better. Your father and I are trying our best to find a way to make life easier for you and your brother. Complaining like this is only going to make things worse. Comprende lo que estoy diciendo? Ay, bendito! I'm not sure what I'm going to do with her. She's just worried about me, mommy. I know, hijo. I just want to teach her how to use her emotions responsibly. Raging about what we don't have will do nothing to help. But if she directs her anger to the right place, she might do something good, right? Mila's really clever. I'm sure she'd come up with some way to help. That's the dream, Mejo. That's the dream. Scene two. Church near La Sienda en Miramar. Daytime. There are sticks, logs, and leaves scattered about, remnants from the storm. Mateo walks in, holding a couple of pieces of plywood in one hand and a bucket filled with nails in the other. Near him, Brisa <coughs> and Ednan are playing with some old dolls and cars. Brisa, Ednan, what are you two doing out here? Playing. Ednan and I got tired of playing inside because there were too many kids. They kept asking for my muñeca and Ednan's carros, so we came out here. Does Mama know you two are out here? I forgot, lo siento. It's all right, but okay, I'll tell her once I get inside. Gracias, Mateo. De nada, chicos. Uh -huh. Now then, I'm going to go drop off these supplies. Don't stay out here for too long. And don't go in too far from the church. Comprenden? Si, sí, si, sí, comprendo. <laughs> Let's get out. Can you pray with us? Hermano, I still have two more hours of transporting work material from the truck to the shelter. I'll see if I can get a break, but until then, I can't guarantee anything. Don't worry, hermanos. Go play, have fun. I'll be back as soon as I can. And don't go too far from the church. Comprenden? Let's go over there. <laughs> <laughs> Mateo picks up the plywood and bucket. And I was like, damn, mommy, you really left me hanging like that? And she was like, yeah. You act like I care about you. <laughs> Sounds like you and her have a tiraera, Rocky. God, do I know it. I'm really disappointed, too. I was really starting to like her. Well, why don't you just give it a break for a couple days, then try again? 
Nah, she definitely doesn't want me anymore. Abraham and Mateo walk forward for a moment before Abraham suddenly stops, eyes wide. Hold up. Didn't you say the twins were out here? Yeah, they were. Ay, Dios, mom is gonna kill me. Por qué? They aren't supposed to be out here without supervision. I told them to stay here. I shouldn't have trusted them. Well, why don't you just go look for them? I should, but... Uh, <clears throat> I told El Jefe, I promised I'd work all day. I just can't quit now. But my siblings, I gotta find them first. Bro, I got you. Huh? I said I got you. I'll tell El Jefe what happened and take over the rest of your shift. If you get back before your shift ends, then you can finish. If not, that's chill too. Just go find the twins before trouble finds them. Muchas gracias, Abraham. You have no idea how much this means to me. Yeah, yeah. Hurry up and go already. Scene three. San Juan, Mila's home. Daytime. Oh, I don't know what to do anymore. I thought they said they would send builders by Friday. Now they're saying it will take another month. I know, I know, amor. There's nothing we can do but wait for now. I would try to fix the house <laughs> myself, but... But you've already tried that, and now you can't lift anything with that busted arm of yours. Manuel, I'm not sure how long we can keep this up. It's been three months. The shelters are closing <coughs> soon. Our son is sick because our house is falling apart. Naomi and Rafael will get better, I promise. <coughs> I hope this all uh -huh. gets better for everyone's sake. I'm, I'm not sure what I'll do if we keep living this way. Scene four, La Hacienda en Miramar, daytime. Mila and Juniper are standing in a marketplace. Behind them are two different types of vendor carts, one that sells food and one that sells jewelry. Juni, Rafael is getting sicker by the day, and it feels like there's nothing I can do about it. Rafael is still sick? I think it's because of the mold. The roof is so broken. Well, did your family apply for a tarp? See, right after Poppy broke his arm. That doesn't change anything, however. It's like they forgot all about our miserable little home. Mila, you can't give up hope, Mila. I promise you, everything will get better. I seriously doubt that, Juniper. Everything's not going to magically get better like it does in books and movies. Honestly, I just wish that someone would whisk me away from this horrible place. <laughs> Hernan, why did you guys run off like that? We were just playing. Hernan and I weren't gonna go far. You made it all the way to the Mercado, Brisa. That's a little too far. It was just part of the game. We were adventurers and can't be an adventurer without having an adventure. <laughs> yeah, my pilot wanted to fly somewhere new. You guys are too cute to stay mad at. I know. You! you. I knocked you over! <laughs> I am so, so sorry about that. Honestly, I was chasing my siblings, Brisa and Hernan, and I wasn't watching where I was going. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. My pride, though, that's another story. You should seriously be careful. You could have hurt somebody. Once again, I'm really, really sorry. Brisa and Hernan are sorry that they ran into you as well, right? Si, si. We're very sorry. Gracias, I suppose. <laughs> Just make sure you know where you're going, see? Si. si. So, where are you guys from? San Juan. Juniper, why does it matter? We probably won't ever see them again. I was just curious, jeez. Can I at least know your name? I'm sure Mila would love to know the name of the cute boy who knocked her off her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Mateo, if you really like to know. That's me, Mateo. I'm Mila. Mila? Yes. Estoy encantado de conocerte. Well, I've got to get home. Uh, there's some work I have to do, and I've already wasted enough time trying to catch these two the others. Okay. Goodbye, then. Hasta luego. Scene 6. San Juan, Mila's home. Sunset. Mila is sitting next to Rafael at a kitchen table and is helping him eat a couple of slices of oranges. Wherever, whenever he starts coughing, she helps him drink some water and tries her best to comfort him. Mama comes into the room, holding two bowls of warm soup. She sets them down on the table before pulling up a stool and sitting down. <coughs> How are you feeling, Mio? Estoy cansado, pero bien. Oh, that's good. 
The medicine that Papi got you, is it helping? I think so. It makes me feel nauseous though. Oh, mijo. Está bien. Mila's been playing with me, so I feel a little better. All right. Let me know if you need anything. Si, si. I will. Mama walks away, leaving Mila and Rafael <coughs> together at the table. I thought you said you weren't feeling any better when I asked. I'm not, but Mommy's super worried, and I don't want her to be so worried, so I lied. Rafael! What? M Mommy just cares for you, that's all. You don't have to tell her how you're feeling so that she can take care of you properly. You're one to talk, hermana. Okay? Don't play dumb with me. I hear you coughing at night, too. It's just a small cough, that's all. It's nothing as bad as what you've got. We're in the same boat. You and I? Pretending that our sickness isn't bad? We'll have to tell mommy and papi at some point. I'll tell them that I'm coughing as soon as you tell them you aren't feeling any better. See? Fine. But you need a promise. I promise, hermano. Can I have some more orange? Finish your soup first. <sighs> Fine. Rafael starts shoveling soup into his mouth as the lights fade. Scene 7. La Hacienda en Miramar. Mateo is with Abran, looking at a list of spices and groceries to buy for their parents. He walks from cart to cart, examining each food item. Uh, I hate shopping duty with you. Why? Because you take a super long time to make any decisions. It's like that time when I took your hermanos to the, to the store, to the fair. They would never make up their minds about what they wanted to do. But that's besides the point. Then what is the point? The point is that we've been here for an hour already, and the only thing that you bought from the list was a snack. Do you want a piece of it? No. Then quit complaining, you big baby. Mila enters. Espera, señorita. Okay. Aren't you the girl I ran over a couple days ago? What's it to you? Well, I just wanted to see if you were okay and maybe buy you something to say sorry. I don't need anything. I'm fine. Thank you, though. Oh, okay. Uh, Mila, uh, I'd like to introduce you to mi mejor amigo, Abraham. Huh? Say hi to me like you, Tom. Oh, hey. Hi. If it helps, Abran, she's the one that Brisa and Hernan ran over a couple days ago to the, on their trip to the market. You're the one who knocked me to the ground. They just bumped me. What? <clears throat> Nothing. Never mind. So, do you guys want to go eat or something? I have some leftover money from running errands. Didn't you just tell me you didn't want me to buy you anything? And I still don't. But I'm hungry and I want lunch. So, do you want to go get lunch? Sure, why not? We can also have some of the snacks from my bag if you want. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to rain check on that. Uh, you talk to Mila and I'll go buy everything on the list for you since it'll take forever otherwise. Gracias, Abran. Abran exits while Mila and Mateo walk over to a small restaurant. They sit around a table. So you never really answered my question from the other day. Which question? About the one where you live? I mean, to be fair, you want me to just met. Yeah, I, d I didn't want to know like your whole address or anything. I, I was just wondering where in San Juan you lived. Like, if you lived close to me or something. Ah, uh, well, my bad. Yeah, I live about a five minute drive west of here. You? I, I live right next to El Museo de Arte. Oh, see. Sí. I know what you're talking about. My old house there is near here, too. Old house? It's not really standing anymore. Hurricane Maria hit it way too hard. My family and I are in the Puerto Rico Convention Center, but it's closing soon. Oh. See, but it's no big deal. Abran and I have been spending a lot of time helping out with the repairs in that area, and they, we've been told that we'll get builders out here soon. That's good. So, uh, are you gonna go back to school when school's open again? No. Once I finish up coming out at home, I'm going straight to working. Why, don't you know how important school is? My papa died during Hurricane Maria. He got caught outside in the storm. My mommy's sick and getting worse, so I'm all that's left to bring in Chavo. Oh. Yeah, you see, I do want to go to school. I really do. I, j I just can't right now because we don't have the money. But it's not that bad. I already know where I'll be working, and it's close to where Brisa and I will go to school. So it works out fine. You do? Will you go to school? Let's see. It's my goal to get into a good college from Los Asturias Unidos and become an atmospheric scientist. That way it can help predict major storms like these and work to prevent more damage. Que bueno. You definitely need school for that. See, si, in any case, I also want to go to school so I can get a good enough job to help my parents. They work so hard to support me and my mom I. Mila! Oh, Mila, it's awful! Que pasa? It's Rafael. He won't wake up. Scene 8. San Juan. Mila's home. Living room. 
Mama is leaning over Raphael, crying and hugging him close to her chest. Ay, mi amor, please wake up! Mila runs into the living room, followed closely by Juniper and Mateo. Mami, ¿qué pasa? ¿Dónde está Rafael? ¿Dónde está pasando? Mila, cálmese. Rafael's right here. He just, he just... Right after you left for the market, Rafael started complaining about his head hurting. He said he felt dizzy, like the world was spinning. Next thing we knew, he collapsed in the kitchen. He's really burning up. You were the only I told him to tell mommy and papi you weren't feeling better. Don't they stop papi? He went to see if he had, if someone had a makeshift stretcher we could use to carry Rafael down to the car since he can't carry him himself. Con permiso, señora, but I believe I might be able to help. And who are you again? Mommy, this is Mateo. The boy I told you about the other day with the twins. We ran into each other at the Mercado. He's actually really nice. And you just followed her home when you heard that her brother was sick? Mommy, stop it! He said he could help! Don't turn him away! Lo siento, mija! I just don't know this Señora, boy! Señora, you could please just give him a chance. Okay, okay. Gracias. You don't happen to have two brooms and a couple of jackets, do you? Scene 9. San Juan City Hospital. Rafael's room. Mila is pacing back and forth in the hospital room. Dr. Valeria checks Rafael's heartbeat and breathing. So, how's he doing? Is he going to be okay? I'm actually going to have to ask you to leave, hon. Your friends, too. There's something I have to discuss with your parents. I'm Rafael's family, too. I should be able to stay. Mila, corazón, don't make this hard. Just listen to the doctor. But, Mommy... Mila! Listen to your mama. Fine. Mila, Juniper, and Mateo exit to the waiting room. <coughs> Rafael is definitely impacted by the mold you mentioned which has affected his breathing now. He has a bacterial disease called leptospirosis. You're very lucky you got him here when you did. So, oh, wait, uh, what? I don't really understand. What's this lepto-whatever thing? This disease, leptospirosis, is the spread of bacteria through the urine of infected animals. It can get into water or soil fairly easily. And with the flood caused by what? My, by Maria, well, it's no wonder that it has already killed people. I did not brought him in when you did. There's a strong chance he would have died. It's all right, Mila. I'm sure Rafael is fine. Then why can't I stay with him, though? Maybe it's the age. Maybe it's a maturity thing. Who knows? What I do know, Mila, is that you have to pull yourself together and stay strong for all of us. I guess you're right. Of course. Now then, I'm going to go check up on the house. I'm sure you guys won't be home for a while, and I'm not entirely sure the door was shut after we rushed Rafael here. Thank you, Junie. You're really the best. So, what do you think is affecting Rafael? I don't know. It could honestly be anything. I mean, the mold is a likely factor. It could potentially be a bacterial thing, something in the tap water, but a lot of things like this come out with storms like Maria. Wow, you know so much. We were covering weather in the human body in science class last year, so I got a chance to study how those two go hand in hand when it comes to natural disasters. You're really serious about the atmospheric thing, huh? Yes! I'm sure there's something I can do to prevent these natural disasters, but to do that I have to understand the weather first. Oh. Dr. Valeria comes into the waiting room and gestures to Mila to come into the room. Mila, you can come in now. Your friend, though, has to stay here. It's all right. I've got to get home. I'm sure my family's wondering where I ran off to. Thank you for everything. Of course. I would do anything for a friend in need. Mila and Mateo go their separate ways, with Mateo exiting and Mila going with Dr. Valeria. Scene 10. San Juan City Hospital. Rafael's room. A couple of days later. Rafael is lying on a hospital bed. Mila is sitting on a chair next to Rafael's bed head resting on the bed as she sleeps. Mila, Mila, wake up. Five more minutes. Mila. Kane is a seat in Hermano, Rafael. Hola, hermana. You have me so worried, idiota. What do you mean? Do you know where you are? Not really, but this kind of looks like the doctor's office. You're at the hospital, Raph. You passed out with a fever. The doctor said you had mold sickness along with some other bacterial lipto Something or other. But we knew that already, didn't we? See, Pero, there's also a bacterial infection that's impacting you as well. If we hadn't gotten you here when we did, the doctor said you could have died. Oh. See, Rafael, never forget how much I love you. We stay. Uh, yeah. Mila, stop scaring your brother. Sorry, mommy. I was just, I was just super worried. I know you were. 
In any case, Mateo stopped by to check up on you and Rafael. Mateo? Isn't that the boy you said ran you over the other day? Yeah, that's me. He's <laughs> <laughs> also the one who went to sleep. He made this really cool structure and everything. Yeah, well, it's nothing. Anything for a friend. Or a friend's sibling. Gracias, señor. De nada. I'm going to get Dr. Valeria and let her know you woke up, mijo. She's been caring for you for a while, and I'm sure she'd be delighted to know that you're okay. What? Okay, mommy. You know, you remind me a lot of my old siblings, Brisa and Hernan. I would do anything for them. Kind of like Homila would do anything for you. Honestly, I'm not sure what I would do if either of them got sick, other than try to care for them as best I can. I'm sure Mila feels the same way. Uh oh, now you've got him thinking he can ask me for anything he wants. It's true though, isn't it? Rafael, you know Mila would do anything for you, right? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, she won't let me touch her stuff ever. And she's definitely an awful tutor when it comes to school. Tutor? Well, someone's got to keep Rafael sharp when school's open again. We do no good to be behind. He needs every bit of school he can get. Oh, and what do you want to be when you grow up, Rafael? I want to be a doctor. Scene 11. The hospital. Rafael's room. One day later. Mamá, papá, and Mila are all sitting around Rafael's bed. Dr. Valeria is standing nearby, a clipboard in one hand, a container holding antibiotics in another. Now that Rafael's awake, I want to cover some things with him. Go ahead. Now then, Rafael, have you ever taken pills like these before? You mean like the ones that make the pain go away, right? <laughs> See, like those ones. The only difference is that you have to take these every morning and every night. Why? <laughs> It'll help clear the infection away. <laughs> like I'll get to go home and stuff? <laughs> yes. <It's> <sighs> exactly. And once the sickness is gone, I'll take you to the Mercado and buy you all the ice cream you want. I think we'll all go. It'll be a nice way to celebrate. Oh, maybe we can go when you get your cast off, mi amor. Maybe I'll be useful again when I get my cast off. Oh, Poppy. Poppy! Hey, you're not useless, you know? If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have gotten the medicine from the other day. Besides, the whole reason your arm broke was because you were trying to help us. I never once thought you were useless, Poppy. I love you guys. I love you too, Poppy. Yo también. Uh, how long will Rafael have to take the medicine for? Oh, well, we usually prescribe it for a couple of weeks to fully fight off the infection. But because of how severely Rafael was impacted, he's going to have to take it for a whole month. A month? That's way too long. Rafael! Que yeah, mami? One month of taking medicine is not too long if it means you survive to live for another 80 years. What if I get sick again later on in life, though? Then I won't survive until I'm 80 because I'll survive until I was, I don't know, however old I was when I got sick again. Oh, yeah, one month of taking pills is nothing compared to four months of dealing with this arm. Well, yeah, I guess, but still. Hey, Benito, Mila, what have you been teaching your brother? Why are you asking me? He does that all on his own. Where do you think he gets it from? Mila. What? No way. <laughs> guess way. Don't start. Yes, Papi. <laughs> Scene 12. San Juan, Mila's home, living room. One year later. Mila is sitting on the couch doing her homework when someone knocks on the door. She sets her homework aside and stands up, glancing around curiously. Come in, the door should be unlocked. Mateo enters with his backpack and a bag full of groceries. Hey, Mila. How's it going? Oh, it's the worst. Rafael's supposedly dating someone. Papi got his cast off and found a job. I've got a crap ton of homework to do. What about that coming off a break when it's so much work? Sounds awful. Wait, you said Rafael's dating someone? Yeah, and he won't tell me who it is. That does mean Rafael's getting better though, right? Yeah, there's that. So what about you? What's new? That's actually why I came here. I have to tell you something. Well, two things actually. Oh? Yeah, Abraham found a pretty well-paying job as a mechanic operator in San Lorenzo. He moved there. Last I heard from him, he found a great place to live and he made lots of good friends. Okay, bueno, I'm really proud of him. Si, sí, yo también. He really likes it there. And he's actually uh, planning to come visit soon. He wants to go to the mercado while he's here. Says it's the best place to get food. Ha. Also, I uh, quit my job a couple weeks ago. What did you do that for? Well, as you know, we wound up buying a new house. I was working full time with my mom to help her pay for it when I realized something important. Okay that I can make un montón más de dinero if I get a degree than if I become a high school dropout. Wait, so... what? I'm going to school, Mila. I'm gonna go with you. Really? Yes. Well, that's great. I guess I better get you started. Get you all caught up. 
You've missed a lot so far. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, I need the help. Although, if you're as bad of a tutor as Raphael says you are... Bah, that dude has the best grades in class because of me. <coughs> Besides, Junie can help too. She's super smart. Fantastico. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. We have a lot of catching up to do. End of play. <laughs>